Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. Uh, for this is part two of this week's video where I'll go through the, uh, some of the other things that have been going on around the factory while, the, uh, while everyone was looking at all the cloud problems and the update woes and so on as I talked about yesterday. So we managed to have some more vehicular woes in the uh, in the last stream, and my uh, my the deep space exploration vehicle uh, spaceship, this one here, which currently is on its way back out, presumably on its way back out to Stardust. Yes, it is, because I sent it back to go and get me some more stuff that I needed for my buildings out there. Um, it had a bit of a crisis. So the way this ship works is it has a beam receiver on it here that is heated up to a bajillion degrees centigrade, which then boils some water and that produces electricity to keep the ship running. Now, the idea of this is that every time it flies back to Norbit, it will then sit in its parking space, it'll get refueled with all of the ion stream, it'll get re re resupplied with water because you lose a little bit through this system here, and most, imp and also very importantly, it'll get the uh, energy beam receiver brought back up to the full 10,000 degrees. Now, unfortunately, some Muppet, uh, and I'm pretty sure that said Muppet was me, borrowed the uh, beam transmitter that heats this one up in order to uh, try and heat up the ships a little bit more quickly for the, that we're sending out to uh, to do the deep space run with the Naquim on it. Because I was building a load of extra ones, and so each time you drop one in, it needs to be brought all the way up to a decent temperature before it can e before it can set off. And you need to bring it up to more than 5,000 before you can even even have it pop out and, and, and into, uh, off, the, off the ground, because otherwise it won't have any power, it won't be able to do stuff. And so that was problematic. So and so, so this, this eventually dropped down to 5,000 degrees, and that meant that we stopped generating electricity from it. And as you can probably imagine, that caused some problems. So, the ship suddenly stopped having any electricity. That meant all of the ion engines immediately died, and all the lasers stopped firing. And so, it drifted into... It carried on travelling for a little while because, you know, inertia. Although it did slow down quite quickly for something that's floating in a vacuum, but we'll ignore that. So, yes, the ship started to carry on drifting, and that meant the lasers weren't working. And that meant it ended up hitting quite a lot of these little asteroids that are drifting around in space in front of it. And so, they hit, hit impact the front of it, and they knocked a few holes in it. And that meant that the ship was then unable to, to, and it, unable to be flown anywhere until it was repaired. This happened, fortunately not in the depths of space, which would have been quite annoying, but in, Kal in Kalidus sphere of influence, and actually really, really close to Kalidus asteroid belt too. It was about here when it happened. Uh, possibly, I was going to say possibly due to the increased number of asteroids as you go through the asteroid belt, but I don't, I think, I think that was just a lucky coincidence. And so the ship was stranded here, and unlike when a ship runs out of ion stream, when you can get it to sort of to go into limp mode, where it'll travel at a speed of of less than one, but it'll at least still travel, it was incapable of moving. And so I um, asked Mike very nicely if he'd mind going out on a bit of a rescue mission and go out and just sort of patching up the holes in the walls. And he was kind enough to say yes. So he flew out from, I think he was in Norbit. So he jumped in one of the uh, one of the local spaceships, flew out, out to the ship out here, patched up the holes in the, in the front of it. And then I was able to then put it into limp mode and get it to drift over to Kalidus Asteroid Belt 2. He also modified it to put the solar panel in it. So at least when it's in the Kalidus Sphere of Influence, it will have a little bit of power available, even if all of this cuts out. So yes, I was able to limp it over to uh, in, into, the, um, into the Kalidus Asteroid Belt 2 dock it there and onto the onto the surface and then point the beam at the at the beam receiver here and start toasting it back up to back up to a comfortable temperature again I brought it up to about 7,000 degrees or so to give it a little to make sure it had at least a little bit of flight time then flew it back to uh, Norbit and re uh, redocked it in orbit there and pointed the beam receiver at it once again so that is all now set up correctly and until I end up stealing the beam transmitter again to heat up another new ship for uh, <laughs> for going out to Stardust it should be absolutely fine as an additional part of that, to hopefully stop it happening in the same sort of way again, I then went out and I labelled all of the different, um, various different beam uh, transmitters here. So we've got one here for the combat ship, we've got one that goes to Snowdrop and I can't write in a straight line, uh, we've got one that uh, work, that keep, provides power to Stardust, this is the one that shoots the ex shoots at the Explorer, the one I've, we were just looking at, so when it's docked, this will be firing and all heated up. Also one for the Naquium ships, whenever they're actually in, in the right place, and they're all, um, they're all, all stacked up at, on uh, Talos at the moment, and I shall explain why in a moment. Uh, and then another one here. This this one says, um, silly. Why are you silly? Ah, yes, that's the one that's firing over here to, to boil this water in order to provide steam to the steam-powered spaceship over here, which doesn't really actually get used because we fly the, because the ship has its own beam receiver on it now. But, uh, you know, the version 1 of the ship was going to be a steam-powered spaceship and um, it, it, it no longer is. So we could probably remove that one. Maybe next time I want to quickly toast up a, 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 a Nacrotite fetching ship, I'll borrow this beam instead, 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 of, uh, more, instead of a more important one. 
Speaking of transport systems doing dumb things, I also came out to Stardust and fixed that train, the one that had split itself in half over here, because we used to have a roundabout in the middle of this um, junction here, and one of the trains had come along here, whipped 270 degrees around the roundabout, and hit, hit one of its own uh, wagons on the way out, and that, as you may, may or may not remember, left, led to the most of the train ending up way, all the way up the top here, and then one little solitary uh, wagon of sulfuric acid being left down here on the junction. So I reversed the train all the way back down, clipped it onto there, and got it running as normal. I also fixed the uh, the rail system around here, so instead of having a loop in the middle here, we now have these turny roundy points like that. I haven't got rid of all of the other uh, loops in the in, in in the area, so I should perhaps I should get rid of this one and just and just turn it into a into a into a uh, a, tur a corner over here. Goodness knows what I should do. I guess perhaps remove the bottom pieces of this. I'll have a bit of a think about what the best way to make sure that trains won't won't do stupid things in the future is going to be. Um, so far, we haven't had any doing stupid things on on these junctions over here, but it is probably only a matter of time. I also continued my expansion off to the north, where we've got now. So I've now got this this rail coming all the way out over here and up to here. It's a little bit silly having this sort of loop back in there, but um, I, it sort of felt like it made sense the way I was going after the patches as I did it. And to be honest, I'm not that worried about the amount of time it takes a train to get out and back again, um, as long as a train can get from here to here and back again, or rather from here to here and back again, in the time it takes to dig up an entire train's worth of uh, naquitite, it doesn't really matter. So there's a little bit of further expansion required out here. I, I, I got um, a few more stations. So I've got one mine here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So that's another five of them. There is also a patch of naquitite down here somewhere. Yes, this one that's quite close to the rail. So I'll probably grab that one as well, just because it's so close by. It feels rude not to. Um, and then then we'll have got all of the easy to gather naquitite that's reasonably close by. A lot of these are raw rare metals. You know, there's a tiny bit there. But yeah, a lot of the purple is raw rare metals because they're more almost the same colour and it's quite hard to tell them apart. There's a patch down there, but it's only half a million, most of a million. This, this patch down here, maybe it'd be worth going in and grabbing all of this, pulling it together, and there's another one. They're, as you can see, they're all, but they're all spaced quite a long way apart, so it takes quite a long time for the trains to get out here. It's a lot of faff to build up, build all the railways, but I've managed to get these ones in, and I think that should now give me, it's not so much the, the quantity of naquitite, it's the throughput rate, and going after more patches like this means I have a lot more mining drills, and therefore we can pull it out of the ground a bit faster, and therefore we can have it being brought over to the processing facilities down here a bit more quickly. And so that means now we've got the, the foot primary and secondary uh, naqu naquitite processing facilities running flat out, at, well, running, running reasonably well up here. Um, I don't know why this train is sitting here like a lemon. Oh yes, it's because we've run out of sulfuric acid. So I could I could tell this one to get lost, go away like that. Um, because there's easily enough sulfuric, you only need a couple of thousand sulfuric acid to dig up a train's worth of naquitite. Um, but because of the way I set the system up, we've had an enormous, and because I've just put down a load more, um, a load more mines up here, each one of these mines has swallowed 100,000 uh, sulfuric acid. Uh, plus whatever is required to top it up, and that means that because we don't have any spaceships coming over here, which I shall talk about in a moment, we run out. We have now run out of sulfur, so we can't make any more sulfuric acid, which means we can't then refill these trains when they come back. So this one's had exactly the same problem again as well. So I can tell that one to clear off like that, uh, and it means the other trains can pull in. We can then f fill these, fill the systems up. However, it doesn't really matter all that much because if we look down here, you can see that all four of these warehouses are completely full of naquitite, and that means that before we need a significant amount more, we're going to get another spaceship landing in here, unloading a huge quantity of sulfur which we can then turn into acid and we'll have loads of it available the trains can then clear off as nor as they normally would um interestingly this one seems to not have any acid in it at all that's uh, quite surprising that must just be oh, the, the shortages as i say or maybe it's a new train uh, but yeah, I, I can go in here. I can, I can manually trigger them to head off. But as you can see, we, the uh, the naquitite that's coming out is, is 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 clogging up these belts fairly quickly. So we shouldn't have any sort of throughput problems. We just need to wait for the spaceships to bring more sulfur over here, so we can make more acid and just get the whole system running running nicely. Um, and we're going to get these hiccups whenever it expands, but it's not too serious. However, as you've noticed, I keep saying we'll wait for a ship to come out because they're not actually travelling at the moment. Well, the reason for that is because, well, you can see, as you can see, it's, it's full. We have no spaceships travelling around over here. If we look over on Talos, you can see that the production of uh, naquitite has stopped. We are no longer letting naquitite ingots through here or naquitite crystals through. So this entire system has gone to sleep. So we've got a massive stockpile of, uh, of crushed naquitite here. If we look up in Tal Orbit, we can see that the ship has landed and, or one of the ships has landed here, and there is loads of, um, of, of crushed naquitite just sitting on the belts here. The ship is full. It's not passing it through. And if we look out into the into uh, the space view, then we can see that there's multiple ships stacked up here and wall waiting. I, I, I don't know how to tell how many there are. They don't line up very nicely. But we can see that there's loads of ships waiting here, waiting to dock. And 
Yeah, we've just we've not got we've not got any any need for Naquium at the moment. And looking over in Norbit, it's because the warehouses over here. Well, then they're not they're not full, but they're as full as they're allowed to get before the system says, okay, that's enough. We're going to cut you off over on Talos. And this is because basically we've not been doing very much science recently. And that's because if we come over here, and I touched on this yesterday quite he quite quite a lot, but o over here. We aren't making the uh, Deep Space Science Catalog ones because we've run out of these ca these cards, uh, which come from here, and we're not making those because we've run out of Particle Stream. So all of this comes back to what I was saying yesterday about the Particle Stream problem, and that has completely zeroed our uh, our Naquium consumption. Now I think there might still be a little bit being used to make cubes. There isn't actually no. We even need Particle Stream to make cubes, so we're not even using it up for that. So yeah, the the, the science has stopped there. Um, because we've got because we don't have enough particle stream, therefore the Naquium consumption has stopped. The entire factory has basically gone to sleep, and it spent quite a lot of the last stream just just idling, really, which is is a weird position for it to be in after it's been such a frenzy over the last however many months we've been playing this for. But yeah, we have run out of so much stuff that it's just it's just gone to sleep. I did use that peace and quiet as a chance to bring out all of the um, all of the, the uh, pro productivity modules I needed for these machines over here. So these are all now upgraded all the way to tier sevens. So we've got maximum productivity on the Naquium. Well, I say maximum productivity. We've got tier seven levels of productivity all the way through every stage that is actually touching Naquium. Over here, these are only threes, but that's because this is only using cryonite and plastic, which we have much larger quantities of rare metals, which we have and uh, which we have much larger quantities of. So that's fine. But everything that's actually touching the uh, the Naquium or the Naquitite or the Naquium is uh, is running with tier seven productivity modules. So we can get a decent amount extra out of that compared to what we'd expect. And let, let's do the numbers just for fun. So we've got. Uh, Four of them in this on this stage, two of them on this stage, and then five of them on this stage. Now it's not quite, it's, it's not that's not going to quite be multiplying those numbers together as I'm showing you here, because we do also bring these two steps through here. So not everything goes through this stage, and therefore not everything, not all of the components for this get the extra 32% boost from that. But quite a lot of it does, and so I'm going to put that number up because it's going to be a bigger headline figure, and that's what we all like to see. Out in Stardust, I realised that with the second uh, crushing facility, we were then producing the powdered uh, iridium, this stuff, uh, a bit too quickly for this one machine to deal with it. And so I thought, right, let's 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 do the fix this the interesting way. There is a speed beacon here that is covering quite a large area. However, there's a little bit off to the right-hand end of it that isn't really being used. So if I nudge this machine across just a little bit like that, then okay, I'll have to reroute the uh, the pipe that goes around it, around it here and and, the, and and this pipe here, but that's not going to be too difficult to do. And that will then mean that this falls in underneath this speed beacon and therefore it can run a lot faster. That means that it's then capable of dealing with all of the iridite powder that comes through very very easily and then passing it on down here and this machine this machine was running more than quickly enough already so it didn't need any extra boosts. I also discovered that with all of this all of the expansion I've been doing we're then starting to run into power issues and if we look back over the last 10 hours I guess you can see there's definitely a bit of a peak that we're hitting as we go across here and so I think and and so and we were discovering that we're hitting the maximum amount of power we're capable of generating which is a gigawatt as you can see and so when, you, when we, were, we were we were actually producing the full gigawatt at this point and starting to and starting to have brownouts and run out of power a bit over here and that's not what we want especially as we're sending signals from here but also just because well we want to keep the naquitite being produced as quickly as possible and so one of the things I sent my ship back to go and get and the reason it's on its, it's flying out here, on its way back at the moment Moment, is to go and get some more of these uh, t heat exchangers and turbines and so I'm going to be able to slap another another couple of these on the bottom of here and I think I want to put an I want to put other ones in as well whether I'm going to put them on the on the side over here yeah I could probably put them in on the on the left hand side here and then have a, t a corner in the pipe and have the turbine coming downward so we'll be able to fit another one on this side I don't want to start pushing them further out because I'd need to use naquium heat pipes and I haven't we haven't started making those yet because because the normal heat pipes aren't good with 10,000 degrees they only go up to 5,000 I think, something like that, and so we wouldn't be able to run the system at its full potential. But I could put another one on the, yeah, I could put another set on the bottom in a straight line like this, and then I could put the two heat exchangers here, with the pipe, pipes going down to a turbine on the bottom, and then more of the condensing turbines as well, and then water pipes running back up to these tanks. So yeah, that'll all run very, very nicely, and that'll allow us to then triple the amount of power we have available. So we'll go up to three gigawatts instead of one gigawatt. The only question, of course, is whether this system here is bringing in enough power. And to check that, I need to return to Kalidus Orbit again, and have a look at this transmitter. And on here, we can see that we're sending 13 gigawatts, and we have a transmission efficiency of about 9.5%. So that tells me that actually we're not sending enough power through. It, um, assuming that's going to stay the same, yes, I'm going to have to put additional um, beam trans be energy beam injectors on here in order to send quite a lot more power through. I might need to steal them from some of these other areas. We'll have to have a bit of a think about 
about which areas require how much power and whether the, and whether I can steal some of those or whether I need to bring more out and if I bring more out whether I'll then need to put and bring out a lot more solar as well because you can see here at the moment we are running more or less at the maximum we've got we have about three gigawatts available so I could put I could fit another three transmitters on here but if we're only getting a 10% transmission efficiency I'm going to need to be pushing 30 gigawatts into the transmitter in order to get the three gigawatts I want at the other end. So we've only got we've only got 13 at the moment. So I'm going to need to more than double that. I'm going to need to put another 17 onto here in order to get enough being sprayed out of this 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 uh, transmitter. I also feel like I should probably split the explorers injectors and and chambers off from the stardust ones um, because that's going to cause weirdnesses and I don't really know exactly how it how it balances everything here and it worries me a little bit so I think some fiddling around with this is going to be required um, and putting a bit more a bit more oomph onto this before we can get it before we can get enough power to be going through to the other end but you know we'll see how it goes we'll keep an eye on it and just and, and, and add to it as required at least there's plenty of space along here to add a lot more energy beam injectors and so I touched on science a little bit earlier in, in both today's and yesterday's videos when I talked about how we're not making the deep space science fast enough. Um, but Tristan has also been working, continuing to work on the advanced science. And so as he's basically so far he's put down lots of flooring and he started thinking about thermofluid. So um, yes, that is a, that is a indeed a start. <laughs> uh, not a lot has been done over here. He's also put down a big chunk of flooring over here as well with a rover port in the middle of it and not a lot else. And the idea behind this is well we, we talked about this a little bit last week. The advanced science pack requires the advanced catalogue which requires combined catalogues and so his plan is to bring in each of the uh, tier 3 catalogues from over in here because we've got we've already got the blue ones here got the uh, pink ones here orange and green we've already got all of those catalogues here so it'd be relatively easy to bring all of those over onto this area over here where he can then make the comprehensive catalogues and then he's also going to need these three uh, data cards and I think he's going to he's planning to bring in those from over here so over here he'll make those data cards each of these they're relatively straightforward they're just bringing they just bring in lots and lots of stuff and you can make a data card from it there's nothing too complicated in here there's nothing too weird like you require data cards from other sciences or you require weird passy roundy loopy arcosphery thing and nothing like that these two are just bring in stuff and turn it into data cards so this one is launch probes which is what he was doing what he was working on over here so that is that is now working we've got a, a nice happy healthy stream of them coming out here uh, so those can be brought in by one train. These two, the other two, power density and quantum computation, can be brought in from over here by another train dropped off over here, and that'll allow him to then make the advanced catalogs. Then maybe we'll make just make the advanced packs here. So we, we do have the advanced neural gel up here already. That could be piped down the middle of here. Uh, we've got the significant data in plenty, plentiful supply. He'll have the catalogs. We've got super cool thermofluid. So all of that could relatively easily be brought through, say, this gap here. Do all of the processing over here, and then chuck the uh, the, the, the actual science packs through here and then they can go down here and into the labs. Uh, so this looks like it should be relatively easy to put together. It's just going to be a bit, a bit of a case of plugging all the bits and pieces together, making sure everything's in the right place and, and, and bringing it in. So I think he's probably going to finish that next week, but we'll see. It depends how many other things he gets distract, distracted by, I expect. <laughs> um, we do at the moment still have a little bit of a stockpile of it in, available in the, in the warehouse and the train over here because these are the ones that got magically upgraded in, in, during, the, uh, during the upgrades. We've got 3,000 plus whatever's on the belt, so we can carry on doing a bit of the advanced science. So that's not the end of the world, but we are going to need more of it at some point in the future. So yeah, he can press build it up here, build it up over here and get that running. So it shouldn't be too hard, probably. Also science related, Mike has brought his um, his Arcosphere production out into the real world now, so it's not just a blueprint. It's now, so he's now built the whole thing up here. It does need a large number of um, of, of, of a plain Arcospheres to be fed in uh, to get the system running. But as I said yesterday, he's waiting for the uh, enough antimatter to be made to make it to, be, to allow him to make enough Arcosphere collectors for it to be worth going out on a big expedition out to many many different different distant asteroid belts and, st and start launching them. Uh, so he, he wants to have, I don't know, 15 or 20 of them made, and each one of those requires crazy amounts of antimatter. So it's going to be a little while until he's able to go out and get those. He sort of he, he's pestering me a little bit to make sure to uh, to get the particle stream running, to get the antimatter running, so he can so he can actually go out on these missions. But once he does, he's going to be able to go out and get that running. He has also put in the folding recipe, sorry, the inversion recipes, I believe. Is that you? Yes. So now we have here we go. We have the uh, Arcosphere creation up at the top here. So dump the plain ones in, put them. In, they'll run through here. They'll be made into letter darkospheres and then over here he's got the two inversion recipes that are going to then bring it that are going to then do this the full swaps with from um, from one side to the other or to, from top to bottom or uh, well he's yes he's calling them top to bottom so ztgo to lxep um 
or vice versa. And so these will trigger in much the same way. He'll detect when there's a shortage of one side. I imagine based on the way he's done the rest of the system, he's going to detect when there's a shortage of, of one side of them and they get the inversion recipe to, to produce, take a load from the other side and transfer them across. There's probably also a safety thing to make sure there isn't a shortage on both sides at the same time. Uh, Mike's system is different to mine in that he detects when there is a shortage of, of something. So it's a lowness detector is the term he keeps using. Uh, and that will then allow him to, uh, to, to say, well, if there's a shortage of this thing, then I need to make some more of it. So I'll use the... I'll use the better of the two recipes that will make that thing to make some more of it, and then we'll, and hopefully it'll bring it back up to uh, back up to the level we want to have it at. Uh, mine, moni my system essentially monitored the number of arcspheres that were in the middle chest and said, if I run my rest, if I run recipe number one. Will it make things better? Will it bring us closer to an equilibrium? And if so, then run it. Both systems are both viable. They both they should both work. I um, I don't see any serious problems with either of them. I, personally, I prefer mine, but I think that might be I think that might just be subconscious bias because it was my system. I'm trying very very hard not to be biased and to come up with an actual use, proper reason for any of these things, but I'm not quite sure what that would be. So that's going to hopefully keep us with a supply an even supply of all the different arcospheres in this warehouse in the middle here. And then those are then going to be needed to be taken out in order to produce the various different um, data cards over here. And so I believe the system he's got over here is, is uh, as you can see over here, we've got we've got the uh, the light. You, you can barely see what's happening. There's so many cables going, running around here, but that's which is just an unfortunate side effect of how of if you want to find out what's on the belts, you need to have that going. So what he's got here is you can see it's uh, ticking through all the various different um, arc spheres here. And each time one of these ticks, I believe it then passes that signal over to here. To well, it presumably will set the filters. It's not doing that at the moment, but I imagine it's supposed to be setting the filters. So you can see them it changing through all the different uh, types of arcosphere here. And so as it goes through each of these, it'll then pass one out. I am not 100% sure how this is supposed to work, but in theory, the idea is that it will then start chucking the uh, chucking uh, the, a, a spray of, of, of the arcospheres out. So we should always end up with a, a reasonable number of each one, a couple of each one on this belt flowing around here. And they can then be grabbed by these machines as they go past in order to make the various different uh, the various different science packs. And then they'll then be, then be passed back out again. We'll pass out just the arcospheres back out onto the belt. They can flow around, go back into the warehouse over here. And then we can use the, uh, the folders and the inverters to try and keep everything balanced. This is then going to allow us to make all, all four data cards, as I say. Those can then be passed down here into the research server here to be turned into the catalogs. The catalogs then flow down here, go into the into the sortimatron down here, and uh, we will then be able to start making the uh, the tier three science packs, which we haven't actually researched yet because we don't like to research the next science pack until we've got until we've got the catalogs already being made because it makes a bit a little bit of a mess. But if I look in FNEI, we can see that Deep Space Science three requires. Surprise, unsurprisingly, the comprehensive uh, deep space science packs. It requires the deep space science pack twos, neural gel. It also requires an aquium tesseracts, and those also require um, arcospheres. So that's going to be a that's going to probably be the next thing that uh, Mike is going to have to build over here. So maybe there'll be a aquium tesseract construction facility going in here. That'll turn the cubes into tesseracts, uh, along with a load, using a load of the um, arcospheres as a as a catalyst. Um, spit them all back in again, and yeah, we'll 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 then be able to we'll then be able to have those, and they can be piped down here as well. So that's going to be the that's going to be I guess Mike's next job. But that and going off and getting actually just getting the arcospheres. So plenty to plenty to be getting on with here, I think. Uh, conveniently, we already have all the Naquium cubes he could need being brought in here, and those are going to be produced. At least once I have a decent amount of particle stream, those are going to be produced in huge quantities as well. As a quick aside, Tristan also came in. He fixed up the pipe down here to stop these two merging. So we've now got the um, we've now got the uh, matter science running nicely. As you can see, we've got a huge number of the tier two catalogs, um, and they're being passed off to the train system. This is now completely full, completely backed up, which is nice because that might mean it'll stop stealing all of the particle stream. Uh, <laughs> but as soon as we start doing science again, then we'll probably start pulling it in again in huge quantities. In fact, if I look at, if I look up here. Um, yeah, okay, we have a decent amount in this station here, and we are no longer calling for more of it, which probably means that when we do finally manage to fill a train back up with this again, so when we do get uh, another 60,000 in here, it might actually be brought over to the uh, to the deep space science area, and so we might get a little bit of deep space science done, or maybe a bit of antimatter made, uh, before I even finish off the new, uh, the, the new upgraded particle stream uh, production system. I wouldn't like to bet on it though, it'll probably just get slurped up very, very quickly, all turned into antimatter and just drunk by the antimatter capsule facility and made into arcosphere collectors, because that seems to be where it's all going at the moment. <laughs> oh dear, but we'll, um, the new system should get that being produced in large enough quantities that we'll be okay. And so, this means we're almost at the end of the video, it brings us on to the, uh, onto research, and well, this might look very, very familiar to you. So last week we were working on the, uh, the bio upgrade for Strength 5, but we don't have any Deep Space Science Pack 1s, so... This hasn't made any progress. We've not finished any researches at all in the last stream, which is uh, kind of disgraceful. Um, and looking along here, we are now, inf that's, that's an infinite one, that's... 
kind of useless. Also, it requires um, it requires oh no, it only requires advanced science. We could we could have done another stronger explosives research, but who cares? We could have done another refined flammables research, but again, who cares? That one's infinite, 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 infinite. infinite. That one's not quite infinite. We could have done another rocket reusability research, but again, we don't really care about that. Those are infinite. And then once we get over to here, actually, I take it back. We could have we could have done this one. We could have done the nutrient enhancement because that doesn't require um, deep space uh, science science packs. We could have done some more of these things that we don't really care about. But anything that's actually remotely useful, antimatter ammo, blimey, uh, anything that's remotely useful now is going to require deep space science. And so because we don't have that particle stream, we don't have any deep space science one packs. Because we don't have any deep space science one packs, we can't make a great deal of deep space science two. So we've kind of just gone, meh, we don't care. We'll get on with the research later once we've got that once we've got that fixed. And so that is going to be a very, very high priority for the, uh, for the next stream, I think. I guess... I hadn't realised how how serious a problem it was. So I knew we were struggling to produce enough particle stream over here. So yeah, we upgrade. We were going in and upgrading the sand, but hadn't realised quite how much of a problem it was until more or less at the end of the stream. So yeah, we'll be doing we'll be doing the upgrades over here. We'll be getting everything running nicely, and then maybe we can start to you you know use do lots of science. We can start to make Stardust run at the speed I've been trying to make it run at to the point where I'm going to need to start putting in more spaceships to carry the Naquitite across to Talos to process into the Naquium. There is a lot of potential here. But it's all being held up by these silly little pink cloud things. So, until that's fixed, we can't really do any more. So, come back on Monday, that is in fact tomorrow, to see all that get fixed so we can start producing these pink clouds at a sensible rate. We can do the antimatter, we can do the we can do the uh, arcospheres, we can do the naquium, we can get everything running again, hopefully. And then the, and the factory will scream back into life and we'll start actually doing research, eating through all of the, uh, all of the um, resources that we're digging up and probably run into some different problems as well. Um, so there'll be lots of new things, lots of new issues to fix, lots of crises, lots of, lots of, and, and lots of new research and exciting new uh, technologies. So join us tomorrow for that. I'll be back on Wednesday as well for the Satisfactory stream. Things are going really well in Satisfactory. I had a really good stream last week and I did some, I, I, I felt, I felt really satisfied. Um, I, built, I started playing with some blueprints, which was nice. I uh, got some, got some new mining set up with those. Uh, and I finally managed to start making the adaptive control units at a decent rate. And that felt like quite an achievement, I have to say. Uh, even though I only actually needed to make about four of them to finish off the, uh, the, the, the phase of research I was trying to work on. So that felt a little bit silly, but at least I've got the concept together now and, and yeah, things things are going well and then of course next weekend Saturday Sunday there'll be more of these videos coming out to, to catch you up on what went on in the, in uh, tomorrow's stream so as ever thank you very much for joining I hope you've enjoyed the videos don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything in the future and I'll see you next time bye bye